um, your voicemail box in your, in your cell phone. Four digits. How long will it take me, using asterisk or Sid Vicious or some other obscure tool, to hack your voicemail box? Five seconds. Assuming you're not using the default 1111 or 1234. Yeah. Are you requiring passwords even when you call in from your own phone? Sorry? Are you requiring voicemail password be entered when you call in from your own phone? Again. Because a lot of voicemail has the option where you have to, you still have to enter your voicemail password even when you're calling from your I'm, own I'm, phone. I'm, yeah, yeah, even with that. Just spoofing your caller ID in here. Spoofing your caller, that's easy. I'm going to get through, I'm going to get to SIP termination from Betamax. Anybody using, using Betamax? Betamax, voice trading, all these guys, you can spoof your IP and you can spoof your caller ID as much as you want. Um, that's easy. But, Here's the thing. Imagine that I would utilize one of these uh, carriers to call your mobile phone, and I would make sure that I get into your voicemail box. Now, I will leave you a message with a call ID that says double O, or actually not double O, we're in the state, O900, da -da 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 -da. Some, some premium number that costs like $5 a minute. How much do premium numbers cost in the US? I'm just following. 20, so $5 is a normal figure. And now I'm going to utilize a different system to hack your mailbox. It'll take about anything between 5 to 10, 15 minutes to go about and brute force your pin code. It's not bad, it's not that big a deal. You know, News of the World, Rupert Murdoch's, they did a wonderful thing for us. You know, people, they hacked voicemails all over the place. And now everybody's saying, oh my god, voicemail is bad. Ah, so that's the same idea. Now, I'm going to hack your voicemail box, go in, and then I'm going to do one simple thing. I'm going to listen to my message, and then, then I'm going to press stop. What will happen? Voicemail box dials back to the number to dial in. 0900. Problem with voicemail systems. How many lines are you able to originate from your account on the voicemail system? As much as it has. AKA, you're going to pay an arm and a leg. Wonderful, no? I've seen that happen, by the way. Yeah? But when you're talking about brute forcing commercial voicemail systems at uh, Horizon, isn't there any mechanism that says if you put the wrong password in more than three or four times, it's going to lock you out for a little while? No, because that mechanism is, is acceptable on a per call basis. That means that if I call in, do two attempts, disconnect, call again, two attempts, disconnect, call again, two attempts. It'll never get locked down. It doesn't lock out the mailbox? No. Nope. Most cases, it doesn't. Well, usually what happens is, is they set it at three fails per call. Okay. So if you only do two, you've never triggered that. Yeah, that's a specific mechanism. mechanism. And, and it, it's not so much Verizon or AT&T. This is one step backwards. This is Converse. This is the companies that are behind it that set these mechanisms in the switches. So, okay. I want another story. Anybody else? Go. <coughs> Call the pilot, the call pilot. No. Yeah. That's even easier. Yeah. So you don't know they're calling your voice. <coughs> right. So I, I have a story. Um, I have a story of uh, updates, 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 and don't trust people. Um, our ownership company had an asterisk box, uh, an elastic di distribution uh, on our premises, and was connected up to our uh, term provider. Uh, they didn't update it. They took away all our uh, software level access, changed our passwords, locked us out of uh, the admin consoles and such, and never had updates. There were arbitrary code executions in Apache and, and uh, portals for elastics and all this such, and at some point, it got hacked. <coughs> so as again, this isn't in, in Elastics itself. This is just, or sorry, in Elastic itself. It's the packages built on top of it, which are readily distributed, and everyone can download them. Um, so it was hacked. They didn't realize uh, it was uh, a SIP provider for quite some time. There was some Craigslist spamming bots that were going on for a while. And about 15 days later, over the 4th of July weekend, they noticed that they were after it and they could make free calls. Um, North Korea, $5 a minute. <laughs> I know that destination. Yes. Um, <laughs> so over the course of a couple days, 
this, we had four hundred thousand dollars worth of gold rods. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's a good number. Um, and of course, since it was on under our account, because we tried uh, getting the ownership company to use their own account with this ITSP, but they did. And before I stepped into the place I am now, I didn't know what happened. You know, this is a week after my company merged with them. Um, wow. <laughs> So all of a sudden, I'm calling the 4th of July weekend from our telco provider saying, hey, you've got some calls, international, and we blocked them out. I'm like, well, this is interesting. No one's there right now. So uh, some forensic analysis down the road and such, uh, it was many, 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 many very expensive calls to the UK and North Korea, and all could have been uh, mitigated by a 